Good morning, guys. Ooh, I don't even need these in because I'm not in, in a group. <laughs> so good to see you guys this morning. Welcome to Thursday's training. I'm excited you're here. Before we get started, I need to get this shared out to the community. So let me go here. If you don't know the community, the community is where you can find emotional shelter guidance, love, support, and understanding in your journey out of codependency, out of narcissistic abuse, out of neglect, and connect with people who get you, who will have your back, and will guide and help you in your own journey there. So if you're interested in that, if that's what you've been looking for, it's above. The link for it is above on Facebook, below on YouTube, and now it's in the community. And if you're on YouTube, it's below on YouTube, yes, and hit that subscribe button and hit that bell, because I release this stuff, new trainings, uh, several times a week so thank you for being here guys i appreciate you today we're going to be talking specifically about the the topic being yourself is isn't going to be comfortable one of the big things i found in my own healing from codependency uh, what did it was the discomfort of it all because we, we we sought comfort and safety in codependency we, we found connection through it. We found connection through pleasing and fixing and caretaking and controlling. We, we found identity. We found purpose and meaning through it. And when we start to exit that, there's a, there's a huge gap in those things for us. We're, we're not familiar with our own purpose. We're not familiar with healthy connection. We're not familiar with vulnerable connection, connection that exists in a, a uh, container of trust and understanding rather than um, control and chasing and hypervigilance. And fundamentally, we're not comfortable being ourselves. We're not comfortable being who we are because <laughs> we've been conditioned to be discomforted with ourselves. We, we've been told that who we are is obnoxious or too much or too little unwanted, harmful, um, even perverted. I've, I've, those are the messages I got about me. And we, we can be told that who we are doesn't matter. Nobody wants you. Why would anybody want you? That kind of thing. We can be communicated non-verbally to that who we are is irrelevant because they won't, they don't spend time with us. They don't connect with us. They, they're not interested in who we are, right? Hi, Jasmine. And so when we exit codependency, we start to really enter who we are because that's the opposite of codependency is self. I call it self-advocacy. So that's a pretty you know, common term, but, but that's how I see it. With codependency comes self-advocacy, self-knowing, knowing, loving, and living who you are. And this is an uncomfortable experience. And it tends to be uncomfortable for a fair amount of time. In fact, um, I'm still getting used to being me. I'm learning uh, and continuing to learn to that I'm worth trusting myself and who I am because who I am is not harmful. The big message I took from my childhood and teen years was that I was a harmful person. And that became kind of like a, a false center of gravity around my my behavior, my personality, how I showed up in the world. And as I removed that and replaced that with I'm, a, I'm worthy and, and whole and safe, it's, uh, it can be very disorienting sometimes uh, because that reference point of harmfulness taught me how to behave. Well, who am I as I be this safe, worthy, beautiful person? That, and that's a discovery process right there. And that's why I'm a big, big fan of Broken Record on this concept of healing is that it's about discovery. It's not about fixing. I didn't have to fix my harmfulness because intrinsically I wasn't harmful. We all did. You know, I did harmful things. I had harmful behaviors, um, harmful points of view, and harmful habits that I had to work out. But we all have those in some element. But who I was and who I am is not a harmful individual. So now the journey is discovering who I am as this whole beautiful, um, safe person. And that's uncomfortable as hell sometimes. I mean, I'll tell you, for the last week, 
it, it, it's that friction I talked about in previous training has been happening because I step out more. I'm a little more direct, clear, and simple, or as some people put it, blunt, um, about how I see things. I'm 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 a hothead. <laughs> I have to understand that, and then and then I'm also compassionate. So so how do I temper that? How do I communicate that? Right. And being seen for who you are when you come from a history of being abused for who you are and being criticized and shamed for it, it's very uncomfortable. So, guys, I want you to know that that's normal. That's okay. It's understandable. There's nothing wrong with you in this. You're actually doing the work, especially when it is really uncomfortable. One of the other big challenges in this discomfort is we don't really have a safe shelter to return to. See, in, in normal, healthy, no normal, I'd say in healthy dynamics, um, children have an emotional shelter in their parents. And their parents are, are one of their major reference points, or points of contact with themselves. We didn't grow up with that. Most of us didn't have that reference point. Most of us didn't have parents that were engaged and interested in who we are and gave feedback based on that that empowered us to help us understand who we are instead we have parents who told us what to be and who to be they didn't encourage us to discover ourselves they told us who we are and then expected us to be that and that created a disconnection from ourselves and a lot of discomfort within ourselves about ourselves and that creates this internal friction that we feel um, being codependent and then that is externalized as we become more self-anchored uh, and self-advocating as, hey, I'm different and this is going to rub weird. And it is. And without this emotional shelter, this kind of journey into ourselves can have some really abrasive edges. It can feel like a bad sunburn <laughs> a lot of times, especially emotionally. So we have to build a shelter for ourselves, and then we have to build a shelter within our friend network. That's one of the most important things I've done for myself is build a network of friends that wanted to understand who I am and that cared about how I felt and who I am. And these are individuals that have confronted me when I'm doing stupid shit. They've also been there and supported me as I've discovered and evolved in my own well-being <clears throat> and that I reciprocate the same. We build this, and this is where I, I'm a big fan of building friendships through this component of discomfort, this friction that we create by being ourselves, because friendships tend to be a lot more stable once they get established and a lot more flexible. And plus, you can have many of them. And in this sense, having high-quality friendships with a quantity of them, having a quantity of high quality uh, friendships creates a sense of safety for ourselves, social safety. And then from there we can launch into romantic, intimate relationships because those tend to be a lot more fragile and volatile. Everybody's calling, you know, the spammers are out. <clears throat> so we create a safety net first and then we build into our romantic relationships from there. That way we have our um, family, our safety net that way. People that have our backs. These are people we can turn to and that, that when shit hits the fan and they'll be there to understand. They'll be there to support us. They'll be able there to support us as we work through the shit and as we create solutions for the challenges we're facing and all that good stuff. So, guys, being yourself is going to be uncomfortable, but it is a primary signal that you are succeeding in your venture and becoming more of you. That means you're going to deal with difference. That means you're going to deal with people misunderstanding you, sometimes mistakenly just because that's life, sometimes deliberately because that's what they want to do. And it, it's also a journey of becoming less and less reactive to that, becoming more autonomous from it and becoming more anchored in your innate value and going, you know, it's okay if people misunderstand me. It's okay if they don't like it. It's okay because I'm okay. It's okay because there's an abundance of people who do get it. There's an abundance of people who do understand me or want to understand me or will want to understand me as I, I meet them and get to know them. When we build our healing based on the premise 
of an abundance of love and acceptance and inclusion being available for who we are, it becomes a lot easier to take the risks to discover who we are and build that network. So just want you to know it's normal to have a lot of discomfort as you become who you are and discover who you are. You're going to disappoint people. You're going to People are going to be really pleased with you. So what? Approval and rejection and being pleased and, and disapproving do not have any bearing on your value. They, they, they're just other people's points of view, right? They're not a really um, intrinsic representation of you. They're just their experience. And we can honor that, you know? Like I'm practicing a lot lately, letting people think what they think and get out of the way, right? And um, accept that I can have my point of view and enjoy it and let it be. And they can have theirs too and let it be. And it doesn't affect anything. I still succeed. They still succeed. Isn't that the point? Because that's really what abundance is, is I can flow and succeed in what I'm doing, asking you. And uh, plus difference is a really great filter, guys, for compatibility and for community, meeting our tribe and understanding who we are. So again, it's going to be dis it's going to be uncomfortable. I know for me, when I was coming out of codependency, I had a fantasy that's like, oh, people will love me. I'll be just great. You know, I won't be swayed by people's rejection or disappointments or disagreements. That's bullshit. Oh, I, I am. I think I, we all are. <laughs> I'm certainly not as swayed as much as I used to be. So it gets, you know, I, I healing the trauma around what came in on those things in my past has made a huge difference to give myself the freedom to occupy my space my way and stay out of the way of other people as they occupy their space their way so this is the challenge here is to become comfortable with ourselves and comfortable with the discomfort that that tends to create as we be ourselves and that's okay so that's all i want you to let to know today is that it's understandable and normal for it to be an uncomfortable experience um, becoming yourself but it is a very positive signal that you're entering your space and discovering you and then living you out there in the world. So there you go, guys. I appreciate you. Thank you for being the badasses you are. Remember that you're worth knowing, loving, and keeping. And I will see you guys next week for our next series of trainings. Okay. Bye-bye, guys.